Hello, I guess I should start at the beginning. My name is Johnny Hunter. I know, I know, you all think I'm Richie the lab tech. <laughs> well, surprise! <laughs> I've only been Richie for a few years, but before that I was Eddie, the delivery driver. And before Eddie, I was Bob, the butcher. Jeez, when I say it like that, it makes me sound a little sinister and serial killer like. No, I was an actual butcher. I worked on the high street for the best part of 20 years. Not that I had anything against the serial killing profession, I was a member of it back in the late 1800s. <laughs> but in my defence, that was before I discovered other ways of feeding my appetites than ripping out my victims' throats and drinking their blood. <laughs> Oh, I probably should have mentioned, uh, I'm a vampire. <laughs> I'll pause for a second while you all take that in. <laughs> so, to summarise, I am not Richie the Lab Tech, I am in fact Johnny the Vampire. <laughs> there are a few of us out there, but we don't tend to cross paths very often. We're quite territorial and vaguely telepathic. Being too near one of our contemporaries for too long results in something not unlike feedback. That and the police used to notice when there was more than one serial killer in their neck of the woods. <laughs> neck. <laughs> Did you like that? Oh, sorry, my apologies. My apologies. <laughs> well, I'm getting off topic here and there's not much time left. <clears throat> I became a vampire in the year of our Lord, 1748, in an incident involving a rather comely lass and a complete disregard for discretion on my part. <laughs> I spent the first 50 years of my undead tenure feeding off livestock on my father's farm before it passed to my nephew and then to his son and then to his son Archie and it was Archie that finally noticed that old Uncle Johnny wasn't ageing, never went out in the sun and liked his steaks bloodier than was decent. <laughs> never one for undue complications or confrontations. I left when I discovered Archie at the table, sharpening steaks and chewing garlic cloves. I made my way to London and was promptly mugged. <laughs> it's nice to know that some things just simply do not ever change. <laughs> some primal instinct kicked in upon my attack and before either I or my assailant knew what was going on, I'd ripped his throat out. I can't imagine any of you watching this has ever tasted blood fresh from the neck. Oh. Mm. Mm. It's divine. Mm. And the adrenaline rush from my attempted mugging only sweetened the taste. Mm. There was no going back to barely cooked steak after that. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I spent the next half century as a part-time actor and full-time serial killer, though I decided to get out of the game after that ghastly Whitechapel affair. And I, I know what you're all thinking, but no. I didn't know who he was, but he wasn't one of us. <sighs> it was quite the come down, I can tell you. I quietly retired from acting and took a job at the local butcher shop. I worked with several generations of one particular family before anyone noticed that something wasn't quite right with old Bobby. Sensing the need for a swift career change, I decided to indulge in my old habits and drained poor Eddie the delivery driver before taking his clothes, identity and his untaxed van. <laughs> Eddie's life was quite useful though, aside from the tinted windows of his van. No one really pays much attention to white van drivers. I mean, hardly anyone noticed that it was a different Eddie delivering to them, and if the odd carcass went missing between the slaughterhouse and the butcher, 
I was an inconvenience rather than a call to arms for the Pitchfork Brigade. <laughs> it was while I was being Eddie that I discovered you nice people here at the haematology labs in the hospital. After years of taking cuts from deliveries, I was all of a sudden being handed whole bags of blood. Human blood. It was heavenly. That's probably not the right term to use here, but you get my gist. I got greedy. And my predecessor here in the lab started to notice when I went from taking a little from the bag to just taking whole bags at a time. Thankfully, he decided to confront me rather than complain to the company that Eddie worked for. He was somewhat lacking in taste for someone who spent their entire life working with blood. The irony. <laughs> And so I became Richie the Lab Tech. It was alarmingly easy to get my foot in the door and once it was propped open, to slip the odd bag of A positive into my thermos. <laughs> but I've had enough. The past few years have been glorious. But I'm just tired of it all. So, I'm waiting patiently in the staff room for the sun to rise and find out for sure how true the myths regarding spontaneous combustion actually are. It's strange. I spent my whole life actively avoiding a tan without the slightest idea if it's strictly necessary. Much the same way I faked a garlic allergy and didn't discover I was unaffected until the great garlic overdose of 2012. Still, I feel it's time to go and to leave behind some small trace of my existence. Oh, by the way, Frank, I know it was you helping yourself to my coffee in the staff room. Shame on you. Well, shit. So, it turns out I'm not impervious to sunlight, but I am impervious to cars speeding up the wrong way of a one-way street. I've been in here a few days now and they just keep pumping me full of blood in order to try and treat my <laughs> anemia. <laughs> and I just don't have the words to tell you how good this feels. I honestly thought it would be more like tube feeding, but it's closer to mainlining illicit substances, <coughs> or so I'm told. I'm going to stay here another day or so, then I'm off to track down someone with a serious iron deficiency and steal their identity so I can get this for the rest of my days. <laughs> I 
I suppose I better figure out how to delete this. <laughs>